Here's my fourth video in my series of videos on derivative rules. The first videos were on power rule, product rule, and quotient rule. And this video here is on the chain rule. So chain rule is used for composite functions. So what if we have a function f at x that's equal to this composite function here, g at h at x. If we want the derivative of that composite function, so if we want f prime of x, what we do is we do the derivative of the outer function at the inner function. So that means we do the derivative of g at x at the value of h at x. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. So multiply that by h prime of x. Now a special case of the chain rule which shows up a lot is we use this when we have a power of a function. So when we have a power where the base of the power is itself a function. So what if we want the derivative of this power? So we want the derivative of g at x to the n. So the base of our power is itself a function. So we have to use the chain rule. So we do the derivative of the outer function at the inner function. So we would just use the power rule as normal. We bring n the exponent down and write that as the coefficient of g at x. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent, n minus 1. And then we have to remember to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. So then multiply that by g prime of x. So hopefully this rule will seem less complicated when we actually do a couple practice examples here in a second. So <clears throat> we're now going to do uh, four practice examples of how we're going to use the chain rule. And it'll involve uh, the product rule, quotient rule, and power rule as well. So make sure you've watched those videos so that you're fully prepared to be able to use the chain rule. So first of four examples. So what we have here is a power where the base of the power is itself a function. So this is that special case of the chain rule I was telling you about. So we're going to have to do, if we want the derivative of this function, we're going to have to do the derivative of the outer function. So the outer function, you can think of that just as... You know, we've got something to the power of 4. Treat it like any old power. So we'd use our power rule. We'd do 4 times that something to the exponent 1 less. But because of that something, the base of the power is itself a function, we now need to multiply this by the derivative of that function that's the base of the power. So we now need to multiply this by 3 because that's the derivative of 3x minus 5. So we did the derivative of the outer function at the value of the inner function. And then we multiply that by the derivative of the inner function. And then we just go ahead and simplify this. That simplifies nicely. Just multiply the 4 and the 3 together. We get 12 times 3x minus 5 cubed. And there's no point to expanding that further. It's in fully factored form. We can leave it just like that. There, 1 of 4 done. Let's move on to the second one. The second one is another special case just like the last one where we're using the power of a function rule. It's just that exponent of the function is now a fraction. It's so a square root symbol means an exponent of a half. So let's go ahead and find the derivative of this just like the last one. So g prime of x equals, we use the power rule where we take the exponent down, a half, and then we keep the base of the power as 4 minus x squared, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, a half minus 1 is negative a half. And then don't forget, because this is a composite function, right? It's a, it's a power of a function. We now need to multiply this by the derivative of the, of the function that's the base of the power. So we have to multiply this by the derivative of 4 minus x squared. And the derivative of 4 minus x squared would be negative 2x. And then we can go ahead and simplify this. So first thing I would notice is I have a negative exponent here. So I'm going to move that whole power, this whole power. If I move that to the denominator of my function, the exponent becomes positive. So in the numerator, I've got 1 times negative 2x. That's negative 2x. Denominator, I've got this 2. And then this power that I'm moving down to the denominator. And that makes the exponent become positive. And then I can do a little bit of rewriting here in simplification. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So I just have negative x over. And this power of a half means the same thing as square root. So I'll rewrite that as square root of 4 minus x squared. So there is my derivative of g at x. Here's my g prime of x. Done. There's 2 of 4 done. 
third one. So we're now going to have to combine uh, product rule and chain rule for this one. So product rule, remember product rule tells us that if we have a product of two functions, so I've got this function times this function, the product rule tells me, so my derivative, my dy over dx equals the derivative of the first function, so x squared plus 3 to the 4, I'll have to use chain rule to find that derivative, so it becomes 4 times x squared plus 3 to the 3, multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, the derivative of x squared plus 3 is 2x. So this whole thing right here is the derivative of that. Now the product rule tells me I have to multiply that derivative by the second function, I have to multiply that by, let me change back to yellow, multiply that by 4x minus 5 cubed. And then plus, right, product rule then tells us we then have to add the derivative of the second function times the first. So the derivative of this second function, once again, I'm going to have to use that power of a function, special case of chain rule, rule that we looked at earlier. So I'll bring the exponent down, 3, keep the inner function as 4x minus 5, reduce the exponent by 1, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inner function, that base of the power. So the derivative of 4x minus 5 is 4, and then multiply that by the first function. That's what product rule tells me to do. So x squared plus 3 to the 4. There we go. So there is a very unsimplified version of, um, of our derivative of that product. Let's simplify this up a bit. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to notice is um, well, actually, let me, let me just collect these together quickly. 4 times 2x, okay, that's 8x. And then I'll keep everything else on that first term. And I've got a 3 times 4 here, that's 12. And then I will keep everything else here. 4x minus 5 squared, x squared plus 3 to the 4. Okay, now what I want to notice is I have two terms, right? They're separated by this plus sign. And of those two terms, is there anything in common that I can common factor out? Well, notice uh, between the 8 and the 12, I could take out a 4. So I could take out a 4 from both terms. So I'll start by doing that. So I'll take out a 4. Also, they both have factors of x squared plus 3. That has 3 of them. That has 4 of them. Whenever you common factor out, you take out the one with the smaller exponent. So I can take out an x squared plus 3 to the 3 from both terms. And they also both have a 4x minus 5 factor. That one has 3 of them, that one has 2 of them, so I can take out a 4x minus 5 squared. So I've taken out all of this from that term and from that term. So I need to divide both of those terms by what I took out. That's how common factoring works. So let's divide the first term by what we took out. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, so I've got 2x. I took out all of the x squared plus 3 factors, and then I took out two of those three, so there's one of those remaining. And now let's look at the second term. Divide that second term by what we took out. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. I took out three x squared plus 3 factors. It had four of them, so there's one of those factors left. And I took out two 4x minus 5 factors. That's all it had, so those are gone. And then I could just simplify what's in that set of brackets there. So dy over dx equals 4 x squared plus 3 cubed, 4x minus 5 squared. And then I've got 2x times 4x, that's 8x squared, minus 10x plus 3x squared plus 9. Um, should I do another line, or I'll just simplify on this line? So all that I would collect here is 8x squared plus 3x squared. That is 11x squared. And I won't forget that. 11x squared. And then there is a plus 9 there. And then we could check if that factors. Uh, we could just check the discriminant, see if it's a perfect square. Remember, check b squared minus 4ac. So negative 10 squared. Okay, that's 100 minus 4 times 11 times 9. Let's see if that factors. Uh, that's not a perfect square number, so it doesn't factor. So there we go. There's my fully simplified version of the derivative. If you wanted to, you could have done this in standard form just by expanding it all out, but I think this works a lot nicer. 
let's now move on to our fourth and probably most difficult practice question of the chain rule. And we're also going to have to use quotient rule when we do this question. So if we want the derivative of a quotient of two functions, we do the derivative of the top function. So the derivative of x plus 3 is 1 times the bottom function. So times x squared minus 1 to the half. I'm going to rewrite the square root as exponent of a half. And we subtract the derivative of the bottom function. So let me just remind you, if we want the derivative of this, we would need to use uh, the chain rule. So if we want the derivative of that, we would have to bring the half down, reduce it by 1, becomes negative a half, and multiply that by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2x. So I can rewrite this down here. So I'm going to have to do minus a half x squared minus 1 to the negative a half times 2x. That's the derivative of the bottom function. Now I need to multiply that by the top function. And that all goes over the bottom function squared. So I need to do x squared minus 1 to the half squared. And I would just multiply those exponents and get 1, so it's just x squared minus 1 in the denominator. But let's go ahead and look at the numerator and see what can be simplified. So first thing I see is I'm doing half of 2. That's 1. So I'm going to simplify that up just a little bit. So first term I've got x squared minus 1 to the half. And a half of 2 is 1, so I can just do minus 1 times x. So that's just minus x x squared minus 1 to the negative a half times x plus 3. And this is all over x squared minus 1. Okay, let's see what can be simplified here. Well, I'll look between the two terms. Remember, these two terms are separated by the minus sign. Is there anything that can be common factored out between the two terms? Well, they both have an x squared minus 1 factor. This exponent is smaller, so let's take out an x squared minus 1 to the negative half and see where that leaves us. So I would have x squared minus 1 to the negative half. That's what I'm taking out. So I need to now divide both of the terms, that term and that term, by what I took out. So I'd have to do x squared minus 1 to the half divided by x squared minus 1 to the negative half. So the exponents get subtracted. A half minus negative a half is 1. So I just have x squared minus 1 minus x. This x squared minus 1 to the negative half got removed, so now I just have x plus 3 there. And this is all over x squared minus 1. So I'm going to take this power, since it has a negative exponent, move it to the denominator, and the exponent will become positive. So the derivative equals, so in the numerator, I've got x squared minus 1, and then I'll distribute that negative x, so minus x squared minus 3x, all over x squared minus 1 to the half, that's the power I brought down, change the sign of the exponent, times x squared minus 1, the one that was already here, and that's to the 1. And I could collect those powers together by adding the exponents, since the bases are exactly the same. And this will be my last line. This will be my final simplified version of the derivative. So I have x squared minus x squared. That's 0. That's gone. So numerator, I have negative 1 minus 3x or negative 3x minus 1, however you want to write it, over x squared minus 1. And then a half plus 1 is 1 half, or 3 over 2. There's my final equation of the derivative. OK, so that's it for chain rule. Uh, I've done four videos now on derivative rules. I'll do a summary video that combines all of the derivative rules together, and hopefully you now know how to take the derivative of lots of different types of functions.